The following is a presentation of KSL Sports. First and 12. A total roundup of this weekend's BYU football and the new look Big 12 Conference. First and 12 is sponsored by Macy's Grocery Store. Your hosts are Mitch Harper and Alex Keery on KSL News Radio and the KSL Sports Zone. We're off and running. Hour number two of first and 12. Happy Sunday to all of you. Mitch Harper, Alex Keery. If you miss any part of the program, make sure to subscribe to the podcast feed. Just search first and 12 or go on the KSL Sports app, kslsports.com. Wherever you get your podcast, we are available on first and 12. Alex, this is always part of the show that I just love breaking this down on, on the Big 12. It's our power rankings. I love this part of the show. The Big 12 Power Rankings Big Board. A weekly rank of all 12 programs from the elite to the bottom dwellers. Do you really love it, though? I do. Because <laughs> I love Power Rankings. I love Big Boards. You know me. I love this stuff. I know. Any rankings? We love lists. If, we're, if you're an American in 2023 and you have the Internet, you love a list. And this is one of those. So you've got yourself a... Uh, well, quite an interesting one at the top here because you had some movement. Uh, but let's start at the bottom, shall we? Because that's become kind of our thing over the last few weeks. Hey, BYU fans, feel excited. Dave Aranda is as much of a mess as as you are, but he's been doing it the whole season. So Baylor, the Baylor Bears at the very bottom of the power rankings at 14, Mitch. Uh, good call putting them there because, yeah, uh, I think BYU is is struggling certainly, but uh, but Baylor's been bad all season long. They have that that Texas State loss would set the tone. And the thing is, I've learned these week one performances against subpar teams. They tell you a lot about these because the, just don't just push it to the side. Say, oh, it's only week one. No, it tells us a lot. And we learned a lot in week one. And we continue to learn a lot about this BYU team that they're not good. They check in BYU at number 13 in the power rankings, the lowest spot they've been this season feels like they're in free fall mode. How can they respond? Oh, the next team you got coming up is Oklahoma. Good luck, BYU. This is, uh, this is they are trending backwards throughout this inaugural Big 12 season. I mean, all I can do is roll the dice and hope that, that BYU next week gets like some weird version of Oklahoma that we've seen before. <laughs> uh, and, and, and Or that BYU does a thing that a lot of teams have done, which is gone, no, we're going we're gonna to figure that out for this one week or – uh, maybe the stage is big enough for them to go, okay, now we're waking up. I mean, I don't see that happening, but, you know, it's it's certainly we've seen stranger things. I think that Oklahoma State, uh, you know, proving to everybody that UCF, uh, you know, could beat you by six touchdowns, and they were one of those teams that we didn't know why they weren't performing, but uh, there you go. Uh, next up on the list, number 12 in the Big 12, Houston. Uh, they lost the lottery of the two bad teams uh, at the bottom of the conference, and they uh, handed Cincinnati their first win of the conference season. And so there's your 12 at, at, at uh, Houston. And then there's your 11 for Cincinnati. So there you go. There's your, there's your bottom four in the, in the Big 12 this year so far. And, and Cincinnati could be a little bit of a reach at the moment. But Houston hasn't been great. I mean, their, their signature win really in Big 12 play was, well, they got the win over West Virginia. And then they got the close call against Baylor. But, you know, Cincinnati has been – somewhat competitive in games. That, that's what's been noteworthy about them. Yes, they're losing. And they've taken some blowouts, too, to Oklahoma State, whatnot. But they've also shown some competitiveness in that. So there's something to be said as the season progresses and you get the whole kind of picture. Being competitive, I think, is noteworthy. Number 10, UCF, off, fresh off a huge win over Oklahoma State. The Knights surging. I think they've been playing some pretty good football the past few weeks, and they seem like they're on pace to maybe get to a bowl game. Mitch, they're five and five. Have we mentioned the five and five teams? It's just so weird right now. Like, you look <laughs> at these teams, you look at their records, and you're kind of going, "What is UCF? What are they going to be?" But uh, congrats to Gus Malzahn, who uh, you know was looking for some sort of a bright hope because everyone was looking at him, going, "Weren't you supposed to be the best new team in the conference? They could be bowl eligible next week after a win, and if they go seven and five this season, I think overall they'd be a little bit disappointing. But in the end, it's your first, it's your first year in the." Uh, in the power in the power five conference and uh to get to a bowl i think for all of these new teams and frankly 
you know, even you look at like TCU, who is on the precipice of not making a bowl uh, themselves, and, and, and man, you could be one of those teams. All, all right, I don't want to get ahead of myself, though. UCF at 10, TCU at 9. I mean, that's one where you could look at those two teams, though, and I could almost put UCF ahead of TCU were it not for the fact that, uh, you know, UCF is 2-5 is and five in conference. And so, uh, yeah, TCU at 9, UCF. But, but certainly you could see TCU start to go the other direction. Uh, but they're the ninth-ranked team in, in the power poll this week, and uh, I don't disagree with it. Number 8, Texas Tech. They've been trending up with Baron Morton back in the lineup, won two in a row. They're 5-5, five and five, knocking on the doorstep of getting to a bowl game. I thought that was a, a tough, gritty win at Kansas. Even though they had to face a, a third-string freshman quarterback, I, you don't have any film on that guy, and I thought they showed pretty well going into a tough spot in Lawrence and Texas Tech playing some pretty good ball as of late. Uh, number nine on the list, uh, of course, as we uh, – or number eight on the list, excuse me, uh, Texas Tech, uh, and then West Virginia at seven – those are teams that I would not have expected to. Or I think we we expected Texas Tech to be a little bit further up maybe, but they're both, you know, had been trending up. And West Virginia, I think coming off of that win against BYU, feeling pretty, feeling themselves pretty well, Oklahoma brought them right back to earth again. It was a weird moment last night in, in, uh, in that game where, you know, it was – because what did the final end up, Mitch? I get all the 50, 59 to 20, the final mm-hmm. there for West Virginia. And I know you're there in Norman, but – uh, Oklahoma, be be assured, Mitch, they are going to show up in Provo next week, and they they smell blood in the water, not just with BYU, but with the rest of the conference now, having the losses from Kansas and Oklahoma State yesterday. They go, hey, the door's wide open for us. It definitely is. And number six, Kansas, they are trending backwards in large part because of their quarterback situation. You know, Jason Bean goes down with an injury, and it was crazy, Alex. The second quarter – his leg gets rolled up underneath him. He goes into the medical tent. A few plays later, he comes back into the game. What do you do with a banged-up quarterback who's dealing with a leg injury? Let's design a quarterback run for him. Jeez. And then he gets hurt again. Right. <laughs> uh, and then he was gone the rest of the night. And so Kansas, yeah, they lost the game to a you know Texas Tech team, which was a step back. And now they're up to three losses in league play. But their quarterback situation, if they don't have Bean, they don't have Jalen Daniels still, uh, they, they could be a team that really slides down the stretch, and they could be a, a team that ends up being 7-5, and five, which isn't an indictment of their talent level. It's just the, the, when you don't have a quarterback that you can trust, uh, that's a big drop, and that's why Kansas sits at number six. Maybe the best 5-5 five and five team in the entire country, Mitch, at number five, the Iowa State Cyclones who, uh, by the way, I think that there, I think that there are a lot of folks who are looking at, at this Iowa State team and they're going, yeah, five and five, why would they be number five in your power poll? Well, it's because they're five and two in conference play. They're tied. They're one of the teams tied for second right now and are looking at the rest of the league going, uh, oh, boy, this is, uh, this is wild. <laughs> like, how, how is this supposed to work out? And Iowa State is uh, just shocking everybody, speaking of shocking, the most shocking loss, of course, yesterday across the conference was not that BYU loss. It was Oklahoma State, who wins Bedlam the week before and then loses by six touchdowns in Orlando this week. I mean, it has to be, Mitch, just a tale of a, of a team showing up and going, boy, it's been an emotional last week for us. We kind of want to take this one off, and we think that we can against the UCF team, and they could not. They lose by 42 down there, and that's why you almost could uh, slide them down further. But, yeah, Oklahoma State is just uh, – one of the more weird years across it. This is one of the best teams in the country in terms of a hot streak, right? I mean, I, I would think that would be the case, considering that they were 7-2, and two, they had a, a bad start, and then they were just ripping wins off left and right. They were moving right up the board, uh, and, and uh, there you go. All right, number three, Kansas State on the list here again. They bounced back from their loss to Texas last week with a – speaking of teams who blow out other teams, Kansas State has just been blowing other teams out when they're not losing this year. That they have. They've been putting the hammer down on teams not named Texas, and that's why they're a defending Big 12 champ. Kansas State's really good this year. They're, they are maybe New Year's Six good, but they've just had a maybe one too many losses. But K-State is – that that's a good sign, too, because I think this, the stigma with Big 12 teams that are not named Texas and Oklahoma, it's what you saw last yesterday against with Oklahoma State. 
They can't maintain continuity. They cannot maintain the success. Kansas State is actually maintaining it. They're showing up in big games. Even though they lost at Texas, they showed up and responded after a slow start. So Kansas State's a very good football team, and they're going to continue to be that going forward into the future. And then number two, the Oklahoma Sooners. You thought that they were trending backwards after last week's Bedlam loss. Well, they just worked their way back to number two. Once again, Oklahoma there uh, in that number two spot where they were you know, holding it down for quite a bit of time earlier this year. Quite scary to see them coming into Provo next week if you're BYU fans. Knowing that they have to they're, – they're looking at this, Mitch, and they're like, we have to win out. And why not just pounce on a, on a BYU team who doesn't know their identity right now than go into Provo – beat them up, do what Iowa State did last night, and then uh, just show everybody else, hey, we're still Oklahoma. And then number one on the list, they escaped yesterday, and I don't know what it's going to look like with their running back injured, but Texas is still number one because they're undefeated, and in a year like this, when you are undefeated, Mitch, you got to find ways to win, and they did it yesterday against, against TCU. That's your Big 12 Power Rankings here on 1st and twelve. Always good stuff. You can check out the full list, too, if you missed it, on kslsports.com. In-depth breakdown on the power rankings every single week around the Big 12 Conference. Taking a break, we get to the Big 12 Sound Roundup, the best sound bites from coaches, players around the Big 12, right here on First and 12 on the KSL Sports Zone, KSL News Radio, and KSL Sports.